All right, so I've got my script. Um, I can show you what that looks like. Um, so here you see scene three script, and I just have the script written out. I don't have me reading it yet. Um, I've got some places in here where I've got things that I'm not sure I don't have yet. So I want to do an interview with my wife, for example. I just put that in brackets. So here's my scene three script, and I can read that um, into a variety of uh, recording devices. I can record it in Audacity if I only want my voice. Um, I can record it using Zoom if I want my voice and my picture, my video rather. I can record it in any number of ways. So the first thing that I want to do is just practice reading. So I'm going to just do this in Audacity. And I'm going to open up Audacity and I'm just going to practice reading it. So that's what I'll do. I'll open it up, Audacity. I've got my script here. Audacity opens up, but I can't see my script, so I'm going to move Audacity to the one side of my screen, and I'm going to move my script over to the other side of my screen, and it's a little too small for me, so I'm just going to uh, zoom in a little bit. So let's go to fit. I'm just going to zoom in, and now I can see mostly the whole thing. All right, and now that I'm ready, I'm just going to go ahead and read it while I'm recording. So I've got my Audacity open on one side, and I'm going to hit record. While the protest movement by American Jews in the 1970s and 1980s did manage to affect some change in the Soviet Union's treatment of its Jewish citizens, the long-lasting effects on American Jewry itself might have been even more significant. One scholar who makes that argument is Maya Balakirsky-Katz who says in her 2010 article in the Journal of American Jewish History, the American protest movement on behalf of Soviet Jewry in the last two decades of the Cold War sought to effect change for Jews behind the Iron Curtain, and in the process redefined Jewish identity in America. But how does that change in American Jewish identity manifest itself today? For one thing, the influx of Soviet Jews into American society has had a profound effect on Jewish American culture. The protest movement made American Jews, in a very real way, our brother's keeper. We had demanded that Mr. Gorbachev let our people go, and we were going to make sure that they had somewhere to go too. Soviet Jews were taken in by their American relatives. My wife, Bella Ginsbursky Bloom, was 14 years old when she came to the U.S. as a Russian Jewish refugee. Now here's my quote with Bella that I will do later. But it wasn't a one-way street. Russian Jewish emigres brought their own music, art, food, and culture into an American Jewish tradition that was eager for the exotic. So that's it. I'm done recording and I'll give it a listen. Well, the protest movement by American Jews. And I'll go ahead and I'll just save that. I might want to do um, a quick effect on it. So I'm going to just normalize the sound. I'll hit Command A to select everything. I'll go to Effect and I'll say normalize and apply. And now the sound should be a little better. Well, the protest movement by American Jews and Great, so I'm done, I'll say file, export, export as mp3, and I'm going to say scene three, um, audio. And I'll save that to my desktop, but eventually I'm gonna put it in that Google uh, drive folder. So let me do that right now. I'll go into my Google Drive folder and I'll go ahead and put that right in that folder. Um, I'll go to my drive and I'll go to my desktop and here's that audio file and I'll just drop that right in to my folder and that's it. And it's there. I can rename it to fit my naming convention um, but then I can just start dropping everything else in. Now let's say I wanted the Soviet National Anthem as well. Let me get that as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up um, YouTube. Here's YouTube. I'm going to move this YouTube file over to the side so I can see my folder, right? And now I'm going to go over to YouTube. And let me go ahead and download. Here's the Soviet an National Anthem because I want that to be part of this scene. Okay, great. So remember, I'm going to open up Clip Grab, and I'll go to Clip Grab. 
and I'll copy this URL and when I go to clip grab it's going to just paste that in there and I'll grab the clip. National Anthem of USSR, I'll hit save. Okay, now it's done and I can go and find it. Where is it? It's probably on my downloads. Here it is. I'll just grab it and I'll drop it right into that Google folder. And I'll just continue collecting my resources like that. So here's my national anthem. Here's my audio. Um, and now I just need to find all of my uh, images. And I'll probably be using images. I'm going to look at my script and I'll say, which images do I want? While the protest movement of the American Jews in the 1970s and 80s did manage to affect some change in the Soviet Union's treatment of its Jewish citizens, I could go ahead and just start using those scenes from uh, the American protest movement. And I'll probably do that for this whole area here, up until my quote. So let me go ahead and find a resource that's going to um, fit that bill. Um, you can go ahead and use the resources, the, the way to find resources that your professor has listed above. Um, but I'm just going to go to YouTube. I mean, I'm just going to go to um, Google Images, and I'm going to find something that is in the public um, domain. So I'll say Soviet Jewry March. And I'm going to go ahead and click on more here. Uh, first, I'm going to click on images here. And then I'm going to go to more. Oh, not more. Tools, I'm sorry. And here's where I'm going to go to usage rights. So I'll say Creative Commons licenses, and I'll click on that. And now I have all these Creative Commons licenses. And I can choose a size that I like. So I'm going to choose large just for the heck of it. And so let's say I wanted to use this image. I can just go ahead and drag that into my folder. So let me see if that'll work if I just grab and drag. Nope, doesn't work. So I'll download it. Save image as. And hopefully it's saving it as a JPEG. I'll hit save. Sometimes it saves it as a, a WebM file, which is annoying. And I'm going to go ahead and show it in Finder. And I'm going to drag that into my scene three folder. Okay, so there's one image that I have and I'm going to go back to my script and I'll say, okay, what else do I need? I need this article because I just want to show the text of this article. So I'll go ahead and get the text of that article and I'll drag that into the folder as well. Um, and now I'll look at the, the rest of my quote and I'll see my, of my uh, text and see what other images I can use. How does that change in American Jewish identity manifest itself today? So I can talk about the influx of Soviet Jews. So let's take a look at um, Soviet Jews in America, for example. And so let's say that I wanted to get an image that kind of talks about that. Um, you know, I'll look around and I'll just browse. And that's so this is what you're going to be doing um, when you're creating these um, these folders with all of your content in it. So I'll just grab this one and you'll find something much better than that. But I'm going to go ahead and um, save image as and I'm just going to save that right. And I'm going to go ahead and pop that into my Story School folder again. I mean, into my um, Scene 3 folder. Show in Finder. And I'm just going to go ahead and drop that right in here. All right, so I've got two images. And now let's say I wanted to. Uh, grab that interview with my wife. I don't have that right now, but I'll grab an image of my wife to put in um, as you know a placeholder. So
So there she is, and here's an image of her, and I'm just going to go ahead and drag that. Oops, I'm going to have to download it. Save. And now I've got that image, and I'll just drag that into my folder as well. All right, so I've got a few things. I've got um, my own recording in that folder, and I've got a few other objects, right? Um, let's go ahead and start building that video.